Thank you very much for joining me. This is a very, very special um, video. I'm going to make it as short as possible. I named it From Heartache to Hope, A Story Only Jesus Can Complete. And um, this is quite an amazing story. You know, you hear a lot of stories out there. Um, and this one is probably the most uh, initially grievous, heartbreaking. Um, I don't, you know, I rest in Jesus and I give him all the glory, by the way, including for this wonderful story we're going to tell here really quickly. I'm going to let you read most of it. Amen. Um, but um, it just proves what the power of God can do. And um, it also will show you how to be um, long suffering. A lot of people um, accuse me of, of being too rebukey or you know, getting to the point too quickly. And some people need a good rebuke. Amen. The Bible says open rebuke is better than secret love. Leviticus um, 19, 17 says, uh, if you don't reprove your neighbor, your brother, um, etc., then you don't love them. You actually hate them, it says. So uh, Ezekiel 33, 8 and 9 also says the same thing. So we've got to be very careful here. You know, there is a balance. You know, the Bible says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. So uh, all the false churches, or most, most of the churches on Main Street all around the world are false, most of them. Amen. And they preach a false love, a tolerant Jesus. Jesus is the furthest person from tolerance you'll ever see and you'll ever read of in the world. You know, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, talking about the LGBTQ movement. For example, really quickly, it says, um, if a man lies with mankind, he shall be put to death. That's it. Okay. That's it. If a man lies with man, he should be put to death. So that's the law of God. Amen. But you say that today, you'll get banned from every single social media and this and that. You shouldn't be on those anyway. Get off of them. They're no good. Um, unless you just very gingerly post Bible verses or whatever. But anyway, I received an email um, a few months back, July 1st. And it was... Um, it was the first time in a very long time that my heart sank. Um, I rest in Jesus. I have no more anxiety. I have no more of depression. I have no more of any of that stuff, right? If I'm resting in Jesus, I have his joy as long as I'm abiding in him. He's my Sabbath rest. Amen. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. I have none of that, you know, quote, mental illness stuff and everything like that. I do have a video out on that online. And I received this uh, email that you're going to see. It's unbelievable, really, how this has turned out. So I'm just going to read a little bit of it, and I'm going to let this video be. Hopefully, uh, I'll keep this video just under 10 minutes. But I do suggest you really listen and, I mean, uh, excuse me, read this entire exchange because it's absolutely incredible. I'm going to start off with Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. The living word of God. It's powerful. Praise the Lord. Everything I post is from the King James Version. So I received this on Thursday, July 1st of this year, 2021. And it says, hello, Jim Miller. You most certainly do not know me, but you have impacted me and my family far more than you could ever imagine in a negative way. We had a beautiful son. His name was, I'm not going to use names here. He was 18 and he had Asperger syndrome. My son, due to autism, had a tendency to get hyper fixated on various things. For a reason I don't still know, he had gotten hyper fixated on your website, Endless Evangelism or whatever it's called. In the last few months, my son went from the happy, carefree boy that me and my husband knew and loved to someone completely different. He would stay up all night crying. We would try to comfort him, but he refused to explain anything to us. All he would uh, say is that God hated him and he was going to help. There was nothing we could do to help him. He threw nearly everything he loved and enjoyed away. He didn't want to go outside. We tried talking to him. Uh, excuse me. We tried taking him to the beach, but he outright refused saying something about, quote, immodesty. 
He didn't want to spend time with the family anymore. He stopped eating his favorite foods. Multiple times we caught him sleeping on the floor instead of his bed. We asked him if something was wrong with his bed, which he replied, no. We asked him then why was he sleeping on the floor? He said that a Christian deserves to suffer and God won't love him any other way. We talked with him about going to a psychologist for help. He outright refused. He started screaming and crying at the very mention of having to take medication. All we wanted to do was help him, but we couldn't. On June 16th, my husband and I went to work while he stayed at home like he was allowed to do plenty of times before. I was the one who found him. He had cut his wrist, and by the time I had gotten home, my beautiful baby was dead. Let me read to you his suicide letter. Quote, Dear Mom and Dad, I love you, but I cannot do this anymore. I cannot walk the line and follow the rules exactly as God wanted me to. I'm going to help. This is a fact. I wasn't strong enough in my mind or in my heart to keep going. I don't want to offend God by continuing to fail him. Please repent and live holy as I was unable to do. Keep me in your thoughts. I love you forever, your son. In the days following, I went through his phone and found that he had visited your videos and Facebook page about 200 times in the last month or so. I watched your videos on YouTube. I have never heard of someone speaking such harmful things in my life. Medicine is witchcraft? Are you kidding me? There was one video he kept watching called, If, quote, if you have anxiety, depression, you're not a real Christian. The things you said in that video are some of the most ridiculous things I have ever heard in my life. Telling someone, quote, shame on you if they suffer mentally? What's wrong with you? I am still in shock and disbelief at what happened. My son was not strong mentally. That isn't an insult. It's a fact. He was easily influenced, a bit naive, but he had a heart of gold. He did everything he could to help the people he loved, random strangers. He took care of his family however he was able. I can still see him coming into the kitchen saying, can I help you with anything, mom? And when, he, when I said no, he would give me a big hug and tell me that he would be there if I did. Now he's gone. He felt like a piece of trash because of the things you said. If I had a way to sue you for your vile content, I most certainly would. I hope you read this email and realize what you have contributed to. My son is gone forever and he isn't coming back. Your fundamentalist rambling has taken advantage of a child who didn't know any better. My son could not handle your message. Even in his death, he cared about us more than he cared about himself. I hope you never forget the message, Jim. I hope every night before you go to bed, you remember this. And I want you to know explicitly that wherever my son is, your nonsense helped him get there. May God have mercy on you. That's the only thing I'm going to read in this video. This goes on for pages, okay? Um, as the conversation started to go back and forth. And there's one thing I did was not react quickly. Amen. Um, you know, we've got to be very careful, especially when somebody is grieving, um, uh, to not react too quickly. Pray about it. Think about it. Confirm things, etc., etc., and then try to work on someone's soul. Amen. Um, yes, there's a time for rebuke. In fact, uh, a lot of times that uh, someone needs a good rebuke. Amen. Um, but this wasn't the time. This was not the time. We have to have that balance. We have to know that the tongue is a fire. Amen. James 1.26. We have to be uh, aware of, you know, we know, yes, Jesus turned over tables. I agree. There's a time to turn over tables, so to speak. Amen. He called um, uh, harsh names, brood of viper, et cetera, et cetera. There's no doubt about it. Amen. And he was called terrible names. You know, Matthew 10.22 is one of my favorite verses. You shall be hated by all for my namesake, but he that endures till the end, the same shall be saved. But what does that mean? You're not hated because you say hateful words. You're not hated because you're a, a, you know, a pompous, careless, hateful person. You're hated because you stand on the truth of Jesus Christ, which sadly has been taken out of the schools, has been taken out of the churches, most all of them, up to 99% of them, okay? And I'll put that teaching down below. Um, that talks about the 99% emergent church out there. They preach a gospel that does not save. There are some great fellowships out there, amen, but they're few and far between. So I hope you will continue on this um, uh, incredible exchange below. Please 
Uh, pray before you read it. It's unbelievable. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and to the very special um, husband or wife that um, I'm exchanging with here, God bless you and stay on that narrow path. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Lord. Amen.